Alrighty, let's get this party started. Hello, everybody. I'm Brun BJ Sweet Thirty Three, and oh, are you kidding me? Nice pausing there. Um, this is episode four hundred and fifty. Uh, BJ Swick could not resist. Um, like I said, I'm one of your hosts, BJ Brun BJ Swick Thirty Three, and with me is Rob, also known as Presar. Hey, what's up, Brody? Hello, hello. And Mark, also known as Wingman Seven Hundred Nine. Hello, hello. Just for anybody that's wondering, if you use Amazon's music client and you hit the space bar, that unpauses it. <laughs> <clears throat> I hit it to switch the scene, and it didn't hit sweet. <laughs> it switched the turn the music back on. So. All right. So we have a show for you this week. Uh, we go live on twitch.tv slash this Xbox Life uh, every Sunday at 10 p.m., and uh, we go for about an hour or so. Um, anytime I say that we might have a short show, we go for like how many hours, guys? Forever. Two, three, <laughs> <laughs> Two, three forever. Um, <clears throat> so I did that uh, when before we started. I'm like, hey guys, we might we might actually have a short show this week. Who knows? And then I doomed us all, right? So yeah. But uh, all right. Well, let's get started. Like we do every week, and we usually do with what we've been playing. Um, Rob has the largest list of us all right now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what what have you been playing? So, um, we played a little bit uh, of Path of Exile after Mark was talking about it. Kind of checked it out a little bit. And uh, I also played some Overcooked. My son and I kind of uh, tag-teamed that one, and... I like it. I like it. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. I love those like time management games. So that was a little bit of a surprise for me. That's about it. Not much. Not a whole lot this week. Cool. Mark, what about yourself? Um, I played Path of Exile, and I'm I'm really enjoying the game. Um, I'm playing as the archer, and uh, I really like all the different abilities that this characters have it just seems like there's so many they're so varied there's so many different things that your characters can do um i don't remember having this much flexibility when uh it was with um in diablo because i played a ranged character there as well but like you can like you got the you know your four buttons you know your y b a and x and you can you can hit each one of them for a different like arrow so i've got like my y is like this rain of fire arrows that comes down i've got a split arrow so it's like three or four arrows going out um i've got um like a poison arrow i've got a fire arrow and then if you hold the right trigger then all four of those buttons change like you got four more options of right. like storm call and blades that go circle around you. So like you can have like like eight different abilities and you know and you're launching like so I can like launch my fire arrows, hit hit the trigger and hit the same button to run the blades around me and release the right trigger and hit fire arrows again. And um I really like that. There's a lot of really neat stuff in this game. Um the loot's overwhelming um, I really do wish it had a pet or some way to have someone haul it back to town, but you get a lot of portals, you know, it's, you're never running shy of those. So you can easily go back and forth to town pretty, pretty often, um, to sell stuff if you want. So, um, loving the game. I'm having a fantastic time with this. Um, if anybody's playing, you know, hit me up, uh, not obviously not this week, but next weekend, hit me up and, um, I'll, well, you can have like six people in a co-op in this. So more the merrier. And the, 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 supposedly the loot drops are better if you have, uh, more people. The only problem with that is the loot's all shared. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my only one complaint about the game is the loot is shared. So, um, other than that, I didn't, it might look like I played Gears of War 4 because I got 17 achievements in the game, <laughs> but I didn't play it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing, but I only got like two. So it was just, yeah, I think, um, I don't even remember. I launched it for some reason. I think I was doing some testing on something. And I, I think, uh, oh, because, oh, I was just seeing if it would, had grabbed the latest update. Um, cause I guess it was like, 
pretty large update they just put out. So I'm like, well, let me just see if this updated. As soon as I launched it, this just pop, 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 pop. And they, they just kept going. I was like, what is going on? And it turned out at the end of it, it was 17 achievements I got that they, I guess they added another 1,000 gamer score. And there was a bunch of stuff for like, playing in the campaign and yeah, doing chapters. co-op in the campaign and beating certain chapters. And so since I'd done all that, it triggered all these achievements. <laughs> so yeah, it, it looks like I played it, but I really didn't. <laughs> yeah. So if you haven't played Gears of War 4 lately, um, go ahead and launch it. Or I think you can even move it. Um, I, someone else in our group was saying, I think it was Kristoff was saying he didn't even launch it he just moved the game or he pinned it or something and all the achievements started popping so Jeez. that was pretty funny huh. so but might be some free achievements out there for you yeah but that's it cool um <clears throat> if anybody didn't notice mark is on location we don't know exactly where um i have a fear it's because he's somewhere nearby in case i played a certain game that he was going to uh, hunt me down, and uh, <laughs> no comment. No comment. I can't. He, that's why it's just a plain background. We we don't know where he's at. So, but uh, are you at least on the east? Are you on the east coast, Mark? West coast? Um, I'm uh, afraid I can't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so. I'm still out here in the great state of Washington, right? For for the moment. But I will be doing some traveling this week, but I won't be going near you. So oh, oh. Ooh, you're geez. safe. Oh, well, maybe for now. Know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you All give right. me a reason to head east. <laughs> <laughs> well, the 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 funny thing is, is is we put it. Okay, so let me explain what I've been playing first. So everybody, we we can get this over with. Um, I myself played a ton of Battlefield One, of course. Uh, played with. Cornbread and Frito and um, Terminator and uh, Drano. Um, oh my gosh, how many other people? I think, and and the thing is, I think we all are enjoying, um, enjoying the game. It's it's fun to play with with a group, and and uh, I talked Cornbread into getting the DLC. He, I think, he's officially, you know hung up Slime Rancher, and he's gone straight Battlefield 1, which is great. Um, but What a uh, jump, huh? Yeah, so hopefully he's not in trouble, because he's like, oh, you're going to make me do this. I'm like, hey, don't don't pin it on me, okay? Um, <laughs> so he says we were killing it on Battlefield 1. We were. We were doing a good job. I got all the basic uh, achievements and stuff done. But uh, so I posted in Facebook... And I just wanted to know how people were enjoying uh, Destiny 2. I played a lot of Destiny 1. And everybody knows my stance on Destiny 2. But, it's you know, it's it's really easy to say that stance that you have when the game's not out. Because you're like, yeah, I'm not buying it. I'm, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think, Mark, you had a game one time that you weren't going to buy but ended up buying, didn't you? At one point in time. I was trying Ever. to no no I can't remember I was trying to remember this game where it was just like I'm not buying that game and then you went ahead and got it. I forget if it was like Call of Duty but it was like for no reason you just like no I'm not getting it and then you got it oh <clears throat> yeah it was it was Call of Duty I yeah. think I say that every year and then I don't know like somewhere and it's not even like when it's launched it's always like months later and I'm like when there's when there's a dead spot no games being released. Mm. And it's like, oh, I need something new to play. I guess I'll buy this and play the campaign. And so I have done that with Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, but so I put a thing out on Facebook asking how everybody's liking it. <clears throat> and the consensus, consensus uh, yeah, the the group that was saying is like, yes, we, we are liking it. It's really good. They're saying the story's better than the first, so on and so forth. So then my question was, was... Oh, that's not hard to do. There was no story in the first one. Yeah, yeah, kind of true. <clears throat> but my question then was, was like, Mark, will will you, you know, like give me crap if if I buy the game? And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> so, which I knew the answer to that. And uh, people were just like, oh, Brian, get the game if you want the game. You know, like, you know, 
play the game if you like it and you really want to go get it. Like, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. So I didn't buy the game. Um, I have not played it, but I have watched a lot of it. Um, I've watched a lot of it in Twitch. And as much as I really wanted to play that game the first day and maybe the second day, like right before I put that post out there, um, I really wanted it. I And the thing is, as I was telling people at work, it's like I'm extra mad at Bungie now because they've put me in a position where I want it, I want something, but I can't, I can't do it. You know, <laughs> you, you can say because I opened my mouth or whatever, but I think I'm in the right with not buying it. Okay, so... But I will say after the third day and the fourth day of watching it on Twitch and, and, and seeing what people are doing and stuff, you so the raid opens up here on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, I think, yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday, the raid opens up. Right. And I've been watching a lot. Tim played a lot, Darkness 429. If and, you know, go check him out if, if, if when he's playing because he's been playing Destiny. And I've been watching him beat the story and grinding and grinding and grinding. And the max power level is 300. And he ended the day one time like at 275 or something like that. Now, this is give or take after about 30-something hours of gameplay. And he's a Twitch streamer. He streams for 10, 12 hours a day. That's his job. And he played Destiny three days in a row. 30, you know, you're pushing 40 hours and you're still not max light, you know, max power level or whatever. And you're just grinding and grinding and grinding. I was just like, okay, yes, it's the Destiny grind. Everybody knows it's aware. It's it's not like it's something we didn't know about. But then my my level of excitement kind of started like plateauing. I'll say plateauing, not going down. My level my my level of excitement kind of plateaued out. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm not buying it on Xbox. You know, I'm gonna buy it on PC. Well, that's that's like almost two months away. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm definitely not going to be in the hype because at that point, I'll, I'll see what the raid is and I'll see how people are struggling on the raid. And not to mention, I don't have 40 hours, you know, in three days to power level. Um, yeah, it'll take me four months to get 40 hours in in Destiny. You know, if I ignore ignore everything else around me. Um. So, you know, my, my level went off, and, and actually, at this point in time, I can say I'm not buying it, and I don't even think I'm going to buy it on PC. And the other reason why I say that is there's another game that's coming out the week before um, the week before Destiny on PC, and it's called, uh, it's the South Park, it's the new South Park game. Now, I have a sense of humor, okay? I mean, I have my limits when it comes to jokes and, th and things like that. Now, you know... I can laugh at anything, you know, even if it's something that's I believe in or this or that, like I can laugh at, at things because I'm not, you know, I'm like most people. Uh, it's just, you know, a joke's a joke. Um, and I played the first South Park and I laughed my rear end off, even in some moments when I'm like peeking through my fingers like this, like, <laughs> like going, oh my gosh. I can't believe this. They're doing this, or this one time when I was playing it and I had no idea what was coming up, and I had to like block my screen and tell my kids to like don't walk through the door, <laughs> and I had to turn it down and minimize it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I cannot believe that that just happened. They've been showing and talking about the next one, which is South Park uh, Fractured Butthole, um, and I'm absolutely buying that game like i've been waiting for that to come out and i didn't realize it comes out about a week before destiny on pc so i got my game in october <laughs> that i'm absolutely buying if anybody goes and pre-orders it you get the first game free so if anybody's interested in doing it go pre-order you get the first game free i played on pc just because that's i got it real cheap i think i got it for like eight bucks or something on a steam sale um if you like South Park and you like that type of humor, go out there and, and get that. It is hilarious and fun. Um, it's not super long. But for for people wondering, you know, did I play Destiny or, or anything like that? No, I didn't. Um, but like I said, my excitement was like through the roof where I was just like beating myself in the head going, I want to buy this game. I want to buy this game. I want to buy this game. And then, you know, after a couple of days, I'm like, 
I'm not going to be able to grind like this. Like, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going home every day and, and doing this stuff. There's there's other games coming out. There's this and that. So I think actually holding off those couple days talked me out of buying it or, or wa- even wanting it at that point. Um, uh, that That's not to say I still won't end up with it, maybe after maybe the first expansion or something. Um, but that's that's where I sit. So... Um, this week I pretty much concentrate on Battlefield 1 because there's people playing it that's that we group up and we have a blast. Um, and I think I'll be streaming Battlefield 1 tomorrow. I would like to see, uh, asking out there now of Cornbread, Drano, um, anybody else that has the DLC. I think I'm going to do the DLC. Um, if we get a couple people, if I get people in there that don't have the DLC and you just have the base game, I will play the base game. I don't care what maps I play. I just like playing with people and having fun. So I know I talked a lot about the one game I played, but I wanted to share the, the destiny stuff as well. <laughs> so, um, cause I know it's those questions I was asking, um, in, in Facebook, you know, so, but I'm glad people are enjoying the game. The game does look great. looks fantastic. Um, but I, I think my excitement for it was, I mean, like I said, through the roof, and then it kind of plateaued out, and then it kind of sunk a little bit. Now it's just kind of at that, like, eh, I'll get around to it some other time, you know. <laughs> but uh, that's about it. You guys good? <coughs> Excuse sure. me. Yep. All right. So next then is Patreon.com. If you go to this xboxlife.com slash Patreon, you'll be taken to our Patreon page where you can become a patron of the show. And that's just a little um, extra, you know, benefit uh, for us. If you donate a certain level, we bring on the show to, um, you know, on as a guest uh, and do that. Now, I will say, and I'll have to ask you guys, like, since we are able to get subscribers now, I think we should throw out, we can be, you can be on the show if you're, you know, a nine ninety nine subscriber or a twenty four ninety nine subscriber because that's the same thing as Patreon. If somebody would rather do it through uh, Twitch than Patreon, so. But we do have our Patreon subscribers, and and it, it's not it's not exactly the same. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, it'd have to be the twenty four ninety nine level at that point because we only get uh, yeah, a certain portion. Be... We can't say what portions <laughs> we get, but obviously we don't get a hundred percent. But I know we have that ten or that ten dollar level on uh, Patreon. So. But, we'll figure it. Out. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not. A, you know, I think the Twitch, the Twitch Prime subs is probably a majority of what we'll see. Um, but if there is that, you know, person out there that just loves subscribing to people and hits that twenty four ninety nine, I will invite you on the show. <laughs> so, um, but all right, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, and of course there's this xboxlife.com slash donate. If you're just one of the, you know, people that don't have subs, don't have Amazon prime, want to float anything. So, but we appreciate everything guys that, that you guys do. And, and, you know, nothing is expected. We don't lock down our show or anything. It's just, you know, just ways to keep the lights on. If you want to say for hosting and all the stuff that we put into it. So, all right. What we got here is some topics. Now, Mark, I, I put your thing on here first because um, I saw you put in face in our Facebook group this week that you turned on your Xbox and boom, you had the new update. And then I noticed a couple other people like, yeah, the, the beta ring came out, things like that. I actually went back in and signed up for it, but I don't have it yet. So I'm curious, what do you, what do you think? Have you had time to mess with it? Is there things you like or don't like? Rob, have you had it? You've had it too, right? Yeah, I'm on the alpha. Oh, you're early, early. So, well, good. There's yeah. two guys, so you guys can kind of bounce back and forth. Then, so <laughs> yeah, Rob can probably tell me that everything I'm about to about to say that I don't like because it doesn't work. He's going to probably tell me, no, that works for me. So if yeah. <laughs> if we do get that, that's because he's on a on a uh, newer build of it. But yeah, the things that I, don't so it is a beta. So if things don't work, you know that's that's a part of well, it. But. Oh, absolutely. So okay. I'm not I'm not mad about anything. Okay. Nothing's um and I've found several numerous things that aren't working. But um so first off, I really like it. I 
I didn't know if I was going to when I first saw kind of like the video of what it was going to look like. I was like, hmm, I don't know. But now that it's on there, I liked it right away. Um, it is absolutely much more streamlined. Um, it's so much easier and faster to get this stuff. Um, I love the new that you don't have to go to the left to bring the sidebar. You just hit the guide button and it brings the sidebar up. And then just going through stuff is so much faster. It really is quicker. Um, so for that, I really love it. I also like that you can pin. So what I've done on my, my main homepage is you've got like, I just like right from the start, I go down once and I'm, I go down once I'm at my game and apps, um, which you only had to go over to the right ones to get to it. But it, it just seems better laid out. And I like where it's kind of permanently at there. I go down one more level and, um, I see my pins. So it's like my pins are right there. They're not at the bottom. Beneath that, I've pinned the Xbox Gold. So like I can always see what the current Xbox, I don't have to go digging for them. The the new games every month, they're going to be right on my main page. And then right below that is the Xbox Game Pass. So when they put new games in, I don't have to go looking for them. I can look right on my homepage and see what's new right there. Um, and then beneath that is the kind of the welcome page that they have, which has like videos and, and help and stuff on the new dashboard and stuff. And they've got this new app, what's called Xbox help. I think that's what it's called. Um, which is really neat. Like, you know, you can kind of go into it and say, how do I do this? And they've got videos and stuff that show you how to do things. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, so I love that. Now, the only thing I, I haven't been able to find a way to do yet is to, Supposedly, you can pin your groups to that homepage. Um, I have not found out a way to do that. Um, everything I've tried by going into the group or clicking on the group, nothing gives me the option to pin it to home. So, um, and they and they even said in one of the things that you that in the new material, it even says pin 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 your groups to your homepage. So, I'm like, okay, well, I can't find out how to do that. So that'll be neat if you can pin your group because that will, I think that will bring the group more forefront to people and we might use it more if it's, we don't have to go try to find it all the time. Um, it's also in your friends list now. So when you go to your friends list, you can click on your friends or groups, but your group's right there. So you can just click on it. It's a lot easier to get to. Um, so I'm looking forward to pinning that to the home. The community page what I've seen there that doesn't work um, is the filter. Now, they, I remember them talking about you'll be able to filter what content is on that community page. And when you've got a lot of friends or a lot of people that, you know, on all three of us, our lists are pretty big. It, it just, you can't really see much because, you know, there's people you may not ever game with. And they're just following you because, you know, of TXL and you're returning that. There, but there's like, I want to be able to be more of like, just see my favorites or the people that I game with on a consistent basis. I'd rather have just their feed and maybe some games um, from the Game Hub info on there and not just like everybody. You know, there's people I don't even know that I'm seeing their stuff. So I'm looking forward to that being uh, hopefully fixed in a newer release or made available. Um, they did say when I got the new update, they did say some features are not yet enabled. So maybe that's just something that's not in the build that I have but it's supposed to be coming and I see the filter button there. Um, what else? Um, I've seen on the game, you can pull up your gamer score. Um, I've seen games that show that I have zero. Um, I've, I've sent that in just saying, Hey, you know, it says I don't have any, but I, I do. It's like, if you look at it, if you launch the game and you do the sidebar, it shows them. But if you go into the app, then it shows like nothing's been done. Um, um, so that's, again, that's just a, an issue within the OS. Um, on the notification bar, it does show, I always have one notification. It has a little number there. Um, it says one, even though there are none. Um, so that, that'll probably get fixed again. It's just a minor thing that I've noticed. But um, other than that, I think everything else, uh, the, the bulk transfer, I did that the other day. So I went out the other day. I was in, uh, what, day, what, what is today? Today's Sunday. I think it was Friday. I was in Costco, and they had a six-terabyte 
hard drive um, on sale. And uh, so I grabbed it and uh, plugged that into my Xbox. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try this bulk transfer. Because before, you used to have to take one game at a time and move it. Very and painful. I was like, I want to move everything. <laughs> yeah, it is very painful, very time consuming. So what I did is I go in, I got it all uh, formatted and connected. And I went into the, the, the hard drives and I, I went to the one that, I, that everything's on. And I said, move and like select all. And then I said, go. And it automatically showed you that it was going to go to the external because it was the only other drive. And I said, go. And it did it. It moved everything. <laughs> it was like 1,000 files or something because all the games, DLC, you know, there's just a ton of stuff. So, um, yeah, it did it. It did it all. I, I, I walked away. I let it go and do its thing. So that was really super nice to have. Um, tournaments, I did mess around with tournaments a little bit. Um, it's not something I'm interested in. It's not a feature I'm interested in, but it, it did work. I got notified on my phone that, hey, your tournament check-in time is now available or is now started, so you can... But you can create tournaments within our club. Uh, I did do that. If anybody saw that, I was just testing, testing out the feature. I didn't actually play that game or do a tournament this for this Friday, but um, I just created one to see it work. But yeah, I, I I really am liking it. I'll be really happy when additional features turn on. Um, there's supposed to be a light mode where your screen is white instead of black. Um, I even had a uh, the weird thing is they gave me a quest to go turn that on. But that option doesn't exist in the build that I have. So, <laughs> so I gave it a one star and said, uh, this option doesn't even exist yet. <laughs> so, nice. But, um, I, you know, so if you're looking for that, that's coming uh, to people. So, but I think that's about it. I really liked it. I was really happy to. It was not, that's not that hard to adjust to. Um, it, it wasn't as hard as I was expecting it to maybe be. So they did a great job with this one. And Brun, I think you'll like it. It seems to be less ads and stuff in your face. Yeah, uh, more of what you're gonna want. So well, I like I like the one. I like the current one. I mean, I don't mind the current one. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I have trouble with it. Always, you know, kicking up the menu every once in a while because I flick my thumb over the the stick or whatever. But I definitely think I'll like the newer one as well. My my thing is I want the pins up. I want my pins and stuff at the top, and I like what you said about moving the games and apps <clears throat> to be the first one down. So, well, that was, that was there by default. So, yeah. Well, that would um, be good. So like the last thing you played is still there. It's like, that's the main box that it's on mm -hmm. and you just click down one and there's like a bunch of boxes beneath it. And then, you know, um, like games and apps is right there. And then I went down and you can move, so think of it as you've got these different sections, right? So you've got your main thing that's there when you first start up. And then below it was like the welcome. Well, I move, I added between that, I added um, different things, right. you know, the, the game pass, the games for gold. You can add games. Like I can put uh, Path of Exile on my main page and it puts a box to the left and then to the right, it'll show like, Oh, your closest achievement you're coming to, or here's the leaderboard with your friend. It tells you a bunch of information to the right about that game. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you'll see screenshots or videos that your friends have posted. So it's really kind of cool. You can pin friends. I pinned both you and Rob to my homepage just to see what it would look like. And again, it's kind of like that. It shows, it shows your gamer tag and card and then some information about you. And if you're online, it'll say, oh, you're playing this. And it's right on your homepage. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a... If you only have a few friends, then you can put them right on your homepage if you want and get the status right there. And then you can move all of that around any way you want. Yeah. So I did watch a video on really it. Cool. It looks it looks like it's it's really good. I mean I'm excited for it. So Rob, you have the floor. Do you have a rebuttal? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I've had this for a, a while now. I don't even remember when I got it, but uh, I like the features. It's uh, a lot of adjustment lately because they seem to be switching the stuff around every couple of weeks. At least that's how it appears to me. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a, a pretty good quote that I, ha I heard from Paul Thurot. He's that uh, one journalist that covers a lot of Microsoft stuff. And he put it in a great way. He goes, Microsoft is basic, I'm paraphrasing it really, 
but uh, Microsoft has been doing a lot to kind of speed up the interface. Because actually, one of his gripes for a long time has been the speed of the dashboard. And that's something that we've talked about a lot. And it's been really annoying, especially with, with that one period where it was super slow and right. unresponsive. So he basically called it out. And he said Microsoft is solving that by just basically lumping everything together in one page. Yeah. So you don't need to actually switch back and forth between stuff. And, uh, you know, I thought about it a little bit. I'm like, yeah, he's kind of right. Yeah. But uh, any improvement is an improvement. So uh, yeah. I think uh, a lot of people will be happy with it. But uh, I, I do like some of the stuff. Um, like uh, for myself, when I hit down, it goes to wingman. And, uh, you know, I was experimenting with like deleting some of those things like the gold and there was like what four of them I think that are there by default uh, at least they were for me but uh, you know it's cool you can customize it and you know anything that can make the system more responsive is is better yeah uh, I did notice they did in typical Microsoft fashion they moved a lot of the settings around that's been kind of a, a gripe of mine with Windows especially with Windows 10 <laughs> I'm an insider in that as well. And, you know, I'll get a new build and then I go to change a setting. I'm like, oh, great. Okay. It's putting in the new interface. No, I just want control panel. I just yeah. want to do it the old way. Well, let's, yeah. if, we, if we move the settings, the users won't be able to change the settings to mess up their computer and turn off the yeah. stuff we don't want them to turn off. You know, they're, they're trying to like dumb everything down. And put it in like these simple interfaces, but like, no, you know, I've been setting my network card this way since Windows 95. I want to keep doing it that way. I don't want the dumbed down interface, right. but uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it, it's a step in the right direction and I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen when Xbox One X comes out. Is there going to be, is, I mean, is it just going to get the same dashboard or is it going to get a new one? something 4k-ish maybe some cool effects i'm fully expecting the same thing but it'd be cool to have something new yeah i'm assuming the same thing it yeah. should be the thing comes out in two months yeah so i think i think oh, this will right. i think this months. yeah i think oh, this will smokes. release this will really er, this when thing will release out, a man. couple weeks prior to the xbox one coming uh, xbox one x coming out so this yeah. will be and, the first and, dashboard. Yeah. Well, it'll probably have ship with the current one. Right. And then it'll require an update as soon as you plug it in. Correct. To get this one, the, yeah. the, the beta build. So. Yeah. Yes, very good. I, I mean, I remember us talking about, like, the speed and stuff, and it was just like, I just remember making the comment. It's like, they need to get back to the basics. Like, the thing needs, the thing plays games. So give me a way to play my games. Give me a way to play with my friends. And that's what I need. And then build on upon that. And it's almost funny that like, it was like two weeks after we did that. It was like, Hey, we're making, <clears throat> excuse me. We're making an update to our dashboard. We're going to get back to the basics. <laughs> it's like, Oh, oh yeah. They listen to our show. <laughs> so <laughs> they're going to go back to the basics of lumping everything together. Yeah. So. <laughs> in one spot. That's okay. Yeah, it's just loading it all in memory the first time. But cool. All right. Well, thanks for the update on that. I was curious when you got it as, as kind of like, that's what made me go back out and sign up for it. Because when I got my Xbox one S I, I turned myself out. I took myself out because I remember I get messing up my Xbox one at least once. And I was just like too much. But now that, you know, I have my thing pretty much basic now. Like I don't have very many games on mine. It's just like the stuff I play and, and uh, so it shouldn't be too bad if I ever have to reset it. I've already had to reset it once one time. It was really weird. It's almost like it crapped out during an update, middle of an update. But... All right. Uh, moving forward. Uh, so if you guys were interested in this, uh, uh, Mark brought it to my attention, actually. Um, there is some new wireless uh, products or wireless gaming uh, coming for uh, coming to Xbox One. And so here's here's the art article real quick. It said, at Xbox, we're committed to providing new ways for gamers to play games they want on the devices they want. 
with the people they want. Uh, last year, we announced the expansion of the Xbox wireless ecosystem to include Windows 10, Windows 10 gaming PCs with integrated Xbox wireless and promised to deliver wide, a, ra oh, sorry, a range of truly wireless accessories. And actually, I had to read this, and I was just like, oh, yeah, that's right. They did talk about them actually releasing that because that's one of the things that Xbox has kind of always been or Microsoft's kind of been bashed on is, oh, it's not Bluetooth. You're not, you don't let everything on there. You guys have this proprietary wireless, which is really funny because the proprietary wireless always worked really, really well. Um, and I know their newer controllers that they have does both. It does the wireless and the Bluetooth and, and stuff like that. Um, so they do have some wireless headsets in here, which is nice. And I just kind of wanted to rattle off some of them. Um, they're, so they're excited to share the line up, which is... Uh, Lucid Sound, Turtle Beach, uh, and Razer. Um, I'm actually a fan of Razer. Uh, I'm not a super happy with the headset I got from them. That's why I went to this the Hyper X, which these are super comfortable. Um, and and the one that they're showing here resembles the one that I have. Um, they they got the like I'm not a big fan. I don't know. I think Rob Rob you, you use Hyper Xs as well, right? Um, you got the cloud twos, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's okay. It. I was going to so, look at, them. I yeah, I got, I got the cloud ones. Um, <laughs> the thing about, I like about these is they're so soft is that they're the, oh, like they're oval that the, the speaker fits around your ear. And a lot of these ones I see on here are, you know, the lucid sound and the razor one. They're complete. They're circles. They're completely round. Well, Unless they're big enough to fit my big ears, I mean, my ears hurt when I wear them. And that's what I was finding after long gaming sessions with um, something like the Razer Thresher headset is what they're calling this. Um, I know this one's wireless, but it, they do. They hurt my ears after a while. Um, and also some, and that headset was compressing. Like it was just like, oh, we're going to make sure this thing doesn't fall off your head by making sure it permanently indents into your head <laughs> where, and that's I, why I like, I like these, the hyper X's and anybody that has uh, Kingston hyper X cloud one or cloud twos, like they are comfy. They just sit there. They're light. They're not wireless, but they're comfortable. So, but what you have here is you have lucid LS 15 uh, X, which is one of those ones. I like, you'll see the people that have cell phones or connect Bluetooth or cell phones. It's like the thing that goes around your neck. And then the earbuds magnetize to it, and they pull them off and put them in your head or put them in your ears. Uh, one of those is 100 bucks. Uh, Lucid LS 35X, which is very similar to what I was just explaining, you sir, is the round uh, wireless. Theirs are 180. Uh, Turtle Beach has the Stealth 600 and the Stealth 700. Now both of those look like they're the oval or oblong, I guess if you want to say, <clears throat> um, type of headset. But for some reason, I'm just not a super fan of turtle beach i feel like they are very low quality for the price that they make you pay on some of the things um but these ones here in all honesty uh 99 for the 600s 150 for the 700s i think those are probably decent prices um definitely for wireless um and then the razor I, i've got the um <clears throat> i got the stealth 500s um and from turtle beach and i really like them i think they're super comfortable so um yeah i mean i i mean that's my experience but yeah. i haven't had like like i haven't used the brands that you guys have used so i could be missing out yeah well actually <laughs> it may I, not be as high quality i don't know but i they're comfortable yeah i i actually i have to apologize to turtle beach because i mistaken them for astros Sorry, Turtle Beach, I haven't had experience with. I was looking into Astros, and the reason is Drain, uh, Drano mentioned Astros changed my life. Those are the ones I go out and look at, and they're like three hundred and fifty dollars. And I just yeah. kind of like, I just kind of like laugh, and I'm just like, "There's no way I'm paying that. <laughs> I'm not paying that. If I was going to do in the, do that, I would have like Sennheiser, like I would have a brand of headphone from a company that makes headphones, you know. And I know Astro makes headphones but i'm talking like you know 350 and fifty headphones is you know that's that's crazy so but uh yeah i apologize turtle beach if you're listening 
Um, feel free to send us 700s if you'd like us to try them out. Um, <laughs> well, I can but, bag on them a little bit. <laughs> oh, see. So, well, the, uh, real quick before you do that, the Razer Thresher <laughs> headset is the other one, and it's 150 as well. Um, I caution you on that. If you have a Best Buy or anything like that that sells Razer products, go put these on your head. Like, go to those places and try them on um, before you sink any sort of money in yes. headsets because that's just a very smart thing to do. I, I feel to, to do something like that. So, yeah, and you know, the thing about headsets too, it, I think they're a lot like cars or consoles or I mean, anything else someone buys uh, iPhones versus Android, you know, people get, you know, there's people in our community who love their Astros, you know, they, they're, the, the, that's all they're going to buy. You know, I'm not, uh, I think I've always ended up with turtle beaches. I think that's all I've ever had. I've had a couple pair. I really liked them, um, and I thought they were good for the money. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm not buying a three, four hundred dollar. Well, I can't remember what I paid for my Turtle Beach. I think they were two or two fifty. I think I paid a lot for them. But um, it was like the first time, the first because the ones I have now are like the first truly wireless ones for the Xbox, um, and uh, they're good. But yeah, I mean, definitely what Brun said. Go to Best Buy. Try them on. And, you know, you don't have to necessarily buy them from there. If you're going to get a better deal somewhere else, that's fine. But go somewhere where you can try them on and see what they're, how they're weighing, what they sound like, how they fit, um, and then make your decision. So everybody's different. So Yeah, the, the, the other thing I was reading into these here is one thing I've never really liked prior to them going and trying to open their wireless technology uh, to, to companies is you would have wireless headsets and they'd always have. So let's take Astros, for example. And, and Astros may be perfectly fine, guys. I, I, I'm I not, I've never owned them. I'm just going based off price. It, it, that, it's, and that's crazy to me. But yeah. um, I know they have the box, which is nice. Um, and so you've got your Xbox plugged into the box and all that stuff. And that's what makes them, you know, the A50s, I think, are the wireless version. So then they're wireless, except for the one wire that has to go into your controller. You know, so it's it's just like they were wireless, but they weren't wireless. And this is just not an Astro thing. I believe it was like anything. I don't know of any true wireless to where you didn't need, you know, a wire into your controller. The Did one I have, the, the Turtle Beaches that I use, the Stealth 500s have no, there's no okay. cable to your thing at all. Oh, they are truly perfect. wireless. Okay, good. There's um, a box that plugs in your console and it's got that optical audio mm -hmm. and then you plug a UB USB in to power it. That's it. Yeah. And you can chat, you can, and it's got all the buttons on the side. You can mute volume. You can control your, vo your game volume. You can control your chat volume separately, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, um, I love having that ability to do that. Um, and everybody is, you know, I've never had a complaint from anybody about, my chat or my microphone on those headsets. So, yeah. And Drano says, I think my A fifties were two ninety nine. you know, just a car payment. <laughs> um, but that, that's, that's good. Cause I was reading this one here and these ones, all these ones here seem to be like true wireless. There's no extra cables or anything. And, and right. so the pair that I have on my head, you know, I have this right here and this right here. So I unplugged them from my computer and I plugged them into this and I, I have the, um, the uh, whatever connector into the my controller that does the volume and the mute, the whatever that twenty dollar piece was, the adapter. Um, even though I have a three and a half millimeter, but I always have to switch them back and forth. And when these comes out, these come out, and I was looking, like I said, to to get new headset. Maybe I'll go into one of these to where I can just be, you know, just for my Xbox gaming, and it's wireless with no wires, which would be be really nice it's something i'd be looking for but very cool all right but i just wanted to throw that out there because you you brought it up and i was like ah we'll we'll talk about that so yeah but yes More definitely options are good yeah definitely go out and try them for sure so but rob do you have a recap for us this week sure yeah some of the news uh from this past week that uh, wasn't huge news, but it's just no, deserves a little blur, a little ch chat, I guess. Is uh, the Xbox? Well, first thing is Xbox Store is soon going to support gifting and wish lists. Oh, yes. this is something that is pretty cool, and 
you know, a lot of uh, websites have, and you know, people can say, "Hey, what can I get Rob for his birthday?" <laughs> so you just can look at my wish list. Hmm. But um, so that's gonna be kind of cool, especially gifting, because uh, previously, like, if you wanted, you know, to give somebody a game, you basically had to buy them a gift card, right? And yeah. then who knows what they would use it for. Yeah. Maybe not that thing that you wanted them to use it for. <laughs> so, um, are you going to say something? No, no. No? So, um, yeah, so these are going to be coming very soon, supposedly. So, uh, that's pretty cool. And then uh, we spoke about him, I think, last week, or was it the week before? Michael Pachter. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that guy that just loves the Xbox lately. Uh, he's basically saying that uh, the Xbox or the Microsoft is going to have a weak holiday season for the Xbox One X. So what exactly does that mean? I mean, the Xbox One X is a premium console. It's really not the console for the masses. So... If it has a good sell through, it's a success, isn't it? It's not like they're looking to sell millions upon millions like a general release, right? I disagree. I I mean I I don't know. I mean, to me, I was just like I would like them. I would like to see them sell a million. I I think a million would be like awesome. Does it mm -hmm. mean, like I mean when when you do NPD numbers? You know, when they do MPD numbers, isn't like consoles like a couple hundred thousand a month? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah. So if they if they do a half million, why wouldn't that be an awesome holiday season? Yeah. It's like I didn't know they had to do something special. But it, you know that that's the that's I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I'd have to ask Michael. Yeah. yeah I'd have to ask him himself. Like, you know, what is it that he wants? What is it that people want? Please just tell us what you want for crying out loud. Because <laughs> to me, it's like they can do no nothing right. They can't do anything yeah. right. They could sell 10 million and it'd be a failure. So it's it's just. Well, well so from what he's saying, so he says it's going to have a weak holiday season, but it's expected to sell, according to him, just about 1 million units. <laughs> which is quite a few. And then he noted that the Xbox One X is an exceptional device, but the price point is just too steep to expect consumers to come out in big numbers. Is a million Basically, not a big number? I, am I <laughs> losing my mind? The ho how long is the holiday? I know the holiday season gets longer and longer. It, it, well, it's going to be from... November 7th till December 31st. Well, not even that, uh, till December 24th. That's the holiday season. Right. And I, and I put it in the middle of November. I don't even go from November 7th. No, I'm just saying from the day it comes oh, out. Oh, that's the day it comes out. Okay, so yes, okay. It comes out November 7th. Yeah. I mean, the holiday season starts in probably September. You know, I mean, some stores already have Christmas junk up. But, Christmas holiday um, season starts after Thanksgiving for the people that don't know. <laughs> you don't skip a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I we we've already seen we've had sightings already, and it's just September of Christmas stuff. So, mm. um, but uh, the stores get to jump on it. But no, I, I'm just saying from November seventh when it releases, it's going to have you know roughly what three, four, about six weeks before Christmas. So, yeah, I think a million in six weeks is probably pretty good for for hardware that it's not, and it's not a brand new console it's not like the switch okay right this is a this is like a an, uh, an iteration of the currently existing ones yeah to, to sell a million of them at double almost double the price of one that's very similar it, i think is pretty impressive well it, uh, i will say if he's expecting in the holiday season for them to sell just about a million then that means everyone else is going to have a bad holiday season because 
you're not going to be able to sell a million switches because there isn't even ever a million out there to ever buy yeah at one point yeah. in time okay uh the Xbox One S, which is going to be cheaper, which I'm sure that will also sell, will go into the totals of a million, you know, if right. since they're going to combine them. So that means Sony has to sell over, you know, let's say 1.5 million in the holiday season of a console that's just $100 cheaper that does not even a tenth of what the Xbox One X is going to do. So it's just like if he's saying X, in my opinion, if he's saying Xbox One X and, and Microsoft's going to have a, a, a not a good holiday season, then that means no thing is going to have a good holiday season. Because I don't see I any I don't see I don't see any of the other ones selling over a million. Not not when it's consistently, you know, they don't touch a million any other month. So I have a I have a theory on this. OK, OK. <laughs> So before last week, where where was Michael Pactor? I don't know. I mean, exactly. This is not a name we I mean, he used to be somebody that was in the gaming news all the time. Right. I mean, he even used to have his own show on was it gametrailers.com? He had asked the pack or something like that. And, um, I mean, he was, you know, everybody kind of like cared about what he said, you know, from the video gamers like oh. us, right. The community, but he's been gone, like no name, kind of like, you know, like Bobby Kotick from Activision, like all of a sudden this guy just disappeared. Like, where did he go? You know, you, you don't hear him anymore. You don't hear from him. You don't hear of him. Same with Pactor. All of a sudden, as soon as this, the X comes out. He's back in the forefront, bad mouthing it. Oh, that's because that's I, he wants attention. I think I think he's <laughs> I think he's getting paid oh. by Sony. And oh, I you think, think this so? Is on Mark, I, 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 it's just it's too coincidental. I think he's getting paid by Sony because Sony doesn't have anything to compete, mm. so they're doing everything they can to try to put it down to try to keep them from losing the holiday if you know lose or win the holiday season. So, yeah, they're going to be way off. That's yeah. just my theory. Well, I, I, you know, the other thing that, now that you're saying that is making me think like, well, I haven't been in the, the front, you know, forefront of anything gaming related for a couple years now. So how could I do it? Oh, I'll just bad mouth the one thing that's coming out that's new. And then people like TXL will talk bad about me. And, but at least they're, Bad news is also, you know, publicity, you know, bad publicity is publicity. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe he's doing it just to get his name and name in the news. So, but, uh, I, I, each gaming company, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, regardless of what this guy says is going to do just fine during the holiday season. Yeah. I feel like each one of them are going to do fantastic. And that's because, gaming's gaming you know what i mean it's it's just go out there buy which you know if there's a console you don't have and you find one cheap pick it up you know help the companies out you know do do what you have to do who cares what it is and the thing is is that's all it's all spin anyways so right. you know you could say well nintendo nintendo didn't have a good year or they they you know okay put it let me trying to think of how to phrase this. So Nintendo's already stated they came out, I think earlier this week and said, they're not going to be able to manufacture enough switches to satisfy the gaming holiday market or right. the, the shopping holiday. Right. So they're going to be completely sold out. They're going to be hard to get. And you can say, Hey, we were so popular that, you know, we were sold out. <laughs> yeah. But the other side of that is, well, you only had 200,000 available and, you know, the other companies an Xbox One X sold a million. You only sold 200,000. Xbox is being shown as a failure, but you're being shown as a success right. because you sold out. You know, it's like it, that's why I'm saying people can't get into all the numbers and the spin. Everything is spun. The media spins it to you know, these companies spin everything to their favor. That's why Microsoft stopped announcing how many units they're selling. They were yeah. losing. 
So now they're like, well, now we're talking about how many how many connected users or how many people make up Xbox Live, and you know they they got to find a different number, a different statistic, or a different way to make them look good. Right. And everybody does it. So yep. you know this is a bunch of BS from Pactor. Who cares? They're they're going to be fine. They're they're already doing fine. So. But yeah. Hi, Rob. What's next? Okay. And uh, last thing is there was an update to the uh, Xbox One YouTube app where they did a bunch of uh, tweaks. And now you can um, use in video links. So use your D pad to select links, take you to other, other videos and stuff. So um, yeah. that's about it. Cool. All right. Then. Well, next is our community time. Um, so this week, it's, well, this is going to be a quick one. All right. We don't have any emails, voicemails this week. Um, but, or do we? Or you guys we, have one, we have one community message. Oh, I did not I will, see I that. I will get it. Sorry, it just popped up for me. Oh, I posted it? the question in our Facebook group. Okay. So. Well, while, while you're looking up that, I will, I will do it's this. There. So, so, okay. So what we have here is uh, if you go to this xboxlife.com, um, you have uh, a variety of ways to contact us. If you go in the top right and you click contact, you can, it'll fill out, you can fill out a form, you'll send us a message and we'll read your message and answer your question. If you click on the far right hand side where it says send voicemail, follow the prompts, we'll get your voicemail in and we'll play it and answer it on the show. Um, you can also just email us directly directly contact at this xboxlife.com as well as if you record yourself on your phone and get an mp3 mp3 please um you can email that using that same email address and we will play it on the show we do guys we do love when people write in and send in voicemails so you know for, for you guys that are in the chat like drano and cornbread and stuff hey you know send in questions there's stuff you guys want to know or want to ask anything um you know Send it in to us, and we'll go from there. Um, if you go to twitter.com slash this Xbox Life, that is our Twitter handle. And uh, I've been trying to post a little bit more on there. Um, but follow that, and uh, we'll, you know, you'll get updates on when we're recording and, and things like that. Um, but Mark is going to go over our Facebook's, Facebook message, and our thing is this xboxlife.com slash Facebook. We'll take you to our closed group. And you can request to become a member, and we will bring you in. And we have a fantastic community on there. I'm not not a huge fan of Facebook myself personally, but I'm on there because our community is on there. And it's not just because it's our community; it's because it's an awesome community. So I really do like our Facebook group. So, and uh, what's what's the what was the message? All right, this week we got uh, Chris wrote in. He's got a couple questions to the first one and I'll let you guys answer this um, should Microsoft upgrade the elite controller to match up with Xbox one X like add Bluetooth maybe PC support dongle included oh so does the elite controller not have Bluetooth no it does not it it was produced and created right prior to like prior to the new controllers mm. I, I wouldn't be surprised Chris if you see that happen um there be an elite elite controller too um the elite controller actually just went on sale which is really surprising it's almost like they're trying to clear out you know yeah. they're trying to clear stuff out prior to holiday because you figured you'd save a sale for holiday um so who knows maybe you will see it i i do i still i still say 99 dollars that magic price point for that controller because it's it's a good controller but the Bluetooth part, yes, that'll help you with, you know, getting on PC, but those dongles, which is what um, Rob talked about, what, last week or a couple weeks ago, they're being delayed. Um, you know, there's those, but you can always plug it directly in using the USB cable. I believe that's correct. So, but... Okay, and then the second quest part of his question is, should Microsoft reduce yearly fee for game pass to like 60 bucks with a live subscription 
why hasn't Microsoft come out with a yearly passcodes for Game Pass like EA Access? It's a it's a monthly service, correct? It's paid monthly. Yeah, yes. ten a month, ten dollars yeah. a month. Yeah, and is it still considered beta? No the preview no, no, or it's, it's live it's, live. I think that's live for everybody now. Yep. Yeah, I've I've seen it before, and I actually saw it with EA Access. Like EA Access on PC did not have a yearly subscription, um, and places like you know CBS like the CBS app and stuff like that, like they didn't offer a yearly subscription. Some places don't do that right off the bat. Sometimes they wait to see what it is and what's happening, and then they come out with a with a yearly yearly subscription. But I tend to subscribe more often to things that have yearly prices and not month to month. But what do you guys think? Would you, would you like to see a yearly instead of month? The month but. oh yeah i yeah that'd be great because i'm paying ten dollars a month the nice thing about the game pass is if you do use bing to do searching and you go out there and do their they got a was it a rewards page for Bing? yeah, yeah. every day there's like things you can do that it, it just takes you a couple minutes and you can get a bunch of points for them and there one of the things is i think once you get around 800 might be a little less than that 800 points um it's a free month of xbox game pass so you know, you can probably rack up a free month every, probably at least every other month if you were really diligent on it. Yeah, it takes two, yeah. it takes two, between two and a half and three months to get 800 points. I used to do that daily. Uh, I kind of stopped doing it and I should get back to doing it. But I had like a pattern that I would go and click on the things that you'd have to click on. And then for like the 15 searches or something like that, I had a pattern with the tabs on their page. Because you couldn't like hit the same tab twice in the same order to make it count. <clears throat> but if you would like, you don't even have to do that anymore. They've got oh. like, it's like game based. Like there's oh. trivia and you know, and it's like you'll click on it. There's a couple you click on. It takes you to a page. It does like a search, right. and you're like, okay, that counts. Just going there counts. And then there's other stuff like, here's a here answer three questions or five questions, right. and it's it's just. It launches like who put these people in order or put yeah. you know, their birth or something or when did these movies release? It's just you know it's real kind of fun things to do and you gain thirty or fifty points just for doing it. Yeah. So. Yeah, pretty easy, pretty easy points. I agree. Yeah, with that. it is. So, but I yeah I think you're right. Um, it's new, and um, you know being that it's brand new and they're they're just developing it, they probably give them some time. They'll probably. Uh, do something like that. I wouldn't be surprised to see a new level of Xbox Live Beyond Gold um, that would include the Game Pass. Um, that you just, you know, maybe you just pay a hundred dollars a year, and for Xbox Live and Game Pass, you know, right. and then, then it's like Game Pass is like forty bucks instead of one hundred and twenty or something, you know. <laughs> so, but good question. Yep. Yep. All right, so I think that's it for that. So, what do we got this week, Rob? It's actually going to be a pretty busy week. Well, a couple, two, three things releasing between September 11th and 17th. This is a big week for me, also. So, uh, starting with September 12th, we have Planet of the Eyes. Uh, NASCAR Heat 2, Pro Evolution Soccer 2018, Maze, that's a corn, not uh thing in, in the papers, <laughs> the, not the puzzle thing, uh, EA Sports, NHL 18, on the 13th we have Transcripted, we also have Don't Starve Together, Console Edition, Baja, Edge of Control HD. Uh, that was on the 14th. On that the is, 15th. Sorry, that is such a horrible game name. <laughs> I mean, I know it's racing or whatever, but Edge of Control HD? I mean, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever. Continue, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Tricky Towers on the 15th. NBA 2K18, also on the 15th. And here's... The big one for me this week, Dishonored, Death of the Outsider. Can't wait for that one. Also on the 15th, we have Time Recoil, Dream Break, Jet O'Mero, Hero of the Universe, 
and NBA Live 18. That's a, that's you know what that's another game that I forgot that I need to go back and play is Dishonored 2. I haven't bought it yet. I played the it's demo. I, I played the demo part of it where remember it was like letting you do like the first three missions or whatever, and I'm like I'm running that game perfect right now. No no kills or one only one kill because I wasn't letting one buddy some person live. But that is such a good game. The Dishonored games are awesome. I'm glad you guys they got are. me into playing that. So that wasn't me. Well, I know that was me. It was Rob and then Rob and some of the people in the community were just like, you know, you oh, have to go play it. It's such the a good people game. with good taste. Yeah, but I never did play like uh, this. This uh, the death of the Out outsider. There was something that outsider related for the first one, right? That's the DLC that I think I got. Can't, no, can't no. remember. Okay, well, regardless. Yeah. But all right, continue. Sorry. Okay, games with gold for Xbox One. We have Trials Fusion for a couple more days. It's going to be switching out on Saturday before the next show. Uh, Forza Five is the title for September, and uh, starting on Saturday, you you can get Oxen Free, which is a pretty cool, pretty cool game. This is the game I was talking about where. Uh, these guys just don't stop talking. <laughs> there is no such thing as a quiet moment. <laughs> it's nonstop chatter. It's not banter, chatter. For Xbox 360, we have Hydro Thunder Hurricane through the 15th. And then starting on Saturday, we have Battlefield 3. And then uh, lastly, if you're an iTunes member, make sure to find our show on the iTunes store. Uh, it's in the podcast section over there. Uh, find the show. Give us a five-star review. Uh, we would definitely appreciate it. The more of these that we get, the higher we get ranked on their site. It gets uh, our podcast in front of more and more people. And then uh, we should probably mention that uh, we are no longer affiliated with Amazon. So our, our affiliate links uh, that we told you to use before uh, no longer work. Or at least they no longer benefit the show. So probably should just mention that. And uh, I believe that's it for episode 450. Do yeah. you guys have anything Ooh. to add before we close it out? Now, 400. One. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say 450. It's a lot of shows. <laughs> yes. So half milestone there. So, but nope, go ahead, Mike. Uh, just, I just wanted to say from the TXL community to uh, uh, the three of us, our hearts, our prayers, our thoughts are going out to all of you in Houston, Florida, Mexico, everywhere else in the world that is being impacted right now by, by Mother Nature. Um, so everybody be safe and, um, you know, just we, we wish you all well. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, with that, guys, uh, everybody enjoy, and we will be back next week with Mark hosting. Mark gets the host using all the new tools next week. It's going to oh, be boy. great. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll get together. Oh, and we, we're going to have a special guest next week, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, you're going to have to adjust a bunch of stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. So, all right. Well, that's it. So, I'm Brian BJ Swick 33. I'm Rob, also known as Presar. Thanks for listening. I'm Mark, aka Wingman 709, taking off. <laughs>